Welcome everyone, Adam the Woo here. Today's adventure begins with wearing an appropriate t-shirt. WDW, Walt Disney World. There's Mickey. And the reason I bring up Walt Disney World is not, not just because of the fact that I am in the vicinity of that theme park that Walt Disney created here on the East Coast. There's a whole backstory to that on how he, in a lot of ways, secretively purchased a lot of the land around here. Well, maybe secretively is not the, the best word to describe it, but definitely purchased land without most people realizing what, let's call it secretively, he purchased a lot of land around here. There is kind of an, un, an unsung name that you can pepper into that creation of that, the, the, the selling of land that Walt bought right here in this vicinity where I am standing. Now, I am next to the water tower that holds no water. I don't think there's any water in there. I think it's just for decor. Celebration Florida. I have a place back in there. I have a residence that I live at down in there. As well, there's some dragonflies. There are some dragonflies right here. A long, there's a dragonfly going by and the Lynx bus. Now this is the corner of Celebration Ave and Bronson Highway. Etch that name in your head, Bronson Highway. I recall, because I have been around these parts for quite some time, my family moved here in 91, even though I travel a lot, bounced around, lived coast to coast, I recall this road always being referred to as Erlo Bronson Memorial Highway. And now I'm looking at the sign and it just says Bronson Highway. And after careening up and down Highway 192, Vine Street, which are other names for Bronson Highway. I cannot find any street signs that now, currently, June of 2021, say Erlo Bronson Memorial Highway. Very peculiar. By the way, I'm inviting you to join me as I go on a little bit of a, a mission of sorts to describe and I'm gonna head down that direction. So 192 heads from the coast, Melbourne, Florida, all the way to Highway 27, past Walt Disney World. And this is all, I said wearing an appropriate t-shirt because Walt Disney World is celebrating the 50th anniversary on October 1st. Magic Kingdom opened its doors. 1971, so August 1st of 2020, October, not August, October 1st. That's got a little misled there. October 1st. I hear a copter. That's right. Come on. Come on there, mate. Come on up there. That was a that was not a good Arnold. This has been a long take for an intro. Someone is honking. Let's go find out who Erlo, where Erlo Bronson Sr. I want to find his final resting place. As well as just kind of give a little little history. And an homage to the man that without him, I'll more on that in a minute, as I, as I go down Erlo Bronson Memorial Highway towards the fairgrounds, Osceola County Fairgrounds, there is a, a little place there that I'm gonna end up at. I'm inviting you to join me. Boy, this is a long intro. It is hot. I'm gonna get back in my car, turn the AC on, and head that way. Join me. Shall you? Now, there were a lot of other landowners that sold Walt land after Mr. Bronson did, but they asked a lot more money than Erlo was asking. In fact, he sold between eight and 9,000 acres to Walt Disney's company for only $100 an acre at the disappointment of Erlo Bronson's family. They thought that he was not selling it for enough, but he had different motives onto why he wanted to sell it for that price. In a way, he really supported what was gonna be happening and supported others. It wasn't all about the money to him. And besides the Disney tie-in, he had a lot to do with Florida history, especially Osceola County. Served on the Florida House of Representatives in the late 40s, well, in the mid 40s. And his son, which also shared his first name, known as Bud, Erlo Bud Bronson, who, according to this sign, is the managing partner of the Bronson Partnership, which, if I remember correctly, now, 
I've slept since then and forget a lot of things, but this building, as I recall, was the Florida Cattlemen's Association before it moved closer to the Osceola County Fairgrounds. Now, Bud, his son, passed away a few years ago. His name's still inscribed on the side of the signage here on Highway 192, Erlo Bronson Memorial Highway. And does it look as if this is being utilized for anything at the moment? Very mansion-esque. Side note, years ago, I got in a car accident right over there in front of that little shopping center mall next to the former Taco Bell that is now used as another business on the other side of the road, heading, heading the other way. Kind of right about there. Yeah, that wasn't a good day. That was a long time ago. Now, Erlo Sr. passed away in 73, and that is when this road was named in his honor, Erlo Bronson Memorial Highway. Okay, heading back to the car now, kind of walking along through the shrubs here. Yeah, a little, little side note, wanted to show this, this uh, establishment that was owned by the family. Possibly still is. Erlo Sr. was also in the Florida State Senate and founded the Cattlemen's Association. Erlo Sr. was the one that sold the land to Walt for $100 an acre. There's a lot of acreage here as well that wasn't sold to Walt. Still sitting here. In fact, all this land is owned by the Bronsons, or was. This is around, just turning off of Highway 192, the road in question, and kind of taking a little, little shortcut around the back. Yeah, look at all this property here. Here's kind of a, a deep cut in a lot of ways, a kind of a throwback that's really only going to apply to anyone who has lived in this area. I know a lot of people watching are, have never been to this area. But if you happen to recall here on the corner of Den John Lane and Erlo Bronson Highway, this used to be a consistent green. It was a green forward arrow. The other lanes would go yellow and red. But what I just drove through was always green. If you remember that, then you have a good memory. The current location of the Florida Cattlemen's Association is right here next to Osceola Heritage Park. Take a look at the sign there, East Bronson Highway. Yeah, as I stated, they don't call it Erlo Bronson Memorial Highway anymore, which is peculiar to me. But this is the new building, the one I was at a few minutes ago up the way, closer to downtown Kissimmee. That was the old establishment. Let's see if there's any clues in here. Have you ever heard of Erlo Bronson Sr.? You've heard the tales? That's true. He was the first one to sell Walt. Walt Disney. Oh, you know Donald? Okay, so you're familiar with you know, Disney World. Disneyland was Walt's original Magic Kingdom out in Anaheim, but not interested, huh? More of a, more into Daffy? Okay, I, I feel you. As stated right there, Erlo Bronson Building. So they named the Florida Cattlemen Association the new structure after Erlo himself. Erlo Bronson Building. Also home of the Florida Beef Council. That's an air conditioner unit right there on the far end of the screen. Right over here is the Silver Spurs Arena, located where they have the fair. And the Houston Astros used to spring train on the back side of this building. Now I also recall way back in the early 90s, this building did not exist. They had an opened air stadium for the rodeo. One of the biggest rodeos in the U.S., Silver Spurs, takes place right here, next to the Cattlemen's Association that Erlo Bronson founded. And also in this vicinity is the next spot I'm stopping at. Rose Hill, established 1883, 
City of Kissimmee Parks and Recreation Department. Looks like someone has skidded out in here. Very, they're hitting the brakes or peeling out. Now this is going to be pretty tough. Didn't research too much, but did a little bit and can't, did not have a plot number or a section. And as the recording of this, it is Sunday. Office is not open. But I'm up for a challenge. Be all too easy to, all too easy to just look something up or have it kind of hand it, handed to you. Sometimes it's more rewarding to spend some time attempting to find a spot. I did find a photo, however, of what the headstone looks like. So I'm gonna have to, I have to get out and do some walking. This is a very expansive property. And there are a lot of Bronsons in Osceola County, Florida, a lot. Also, Parton's. Parton is another very common family name around these parts. Parton. The Partons and the Bronsons. And the Overstreets. Another one. Partons, Overstreets, Bronsons. Very common names and big families. So, oh, that's thunder. That is thunder over there. Might get rained out. All right, I gotta, gotta keep looking. This looks to be like an older section here. This is a photograph of Erlo Bronson Sr. of what he looked like back in the day and this is what, this is really the only clue looks to be there is another, another headstone and piece of concrete behind this one and not, not the best photograph but I'm looking for something that looks about, well something that looks exactly like this. Where? I don't know. Somewhere on this property. The smartest thing to do would be to start on the far end over here and work my way up towards the front. Now there's also another property, totally separate entity, separated by a fence over there. So I won't be going into that section because it is located here in this section, even though it's very vast. I might get lucky with seeing a grouping of Bronsons. I would imagine he's near a lot of his other family. Just a guess. Some of the dates on here are 71, 72. We're looking for 73. So it wouldn't make sense. It could be, it could be back in here. Now this one has a inscription of a car on it, a sports car. See it there? Right there on the on the stone. Pretty neat. I'm seeing a Bronson back there. Not the one I'm looking for, however. Quite a few overstreets. In fact, probably a half a dozen or more. Overstreet was his middle name. 
So it is a family correlation to the Overstreets also. Could be in here. More of the Partons. One there, another Parton over there. Still no sign of what I'm looking for. This is quite a challenge. thundering pretty good now. Very overcast. The sun is well behind the clouds at this point. Most likely gonna rain. The overcastness is really adding some ambiance to this for sure. And the thunder. Nothing is giving me any clues. None of these look precisely what I'm looking for. Okay, these over here look a little more similar in style. As the thunder very prominent there is a Hitchcock right here had to roll the window up now there is a Bronson right there I see a Bronson which looks very similar oh my gosh this okay there is a Bronson right there you can hard to see could that be it? That might be, I think I might have found it. And I'm just realizing I forgot my umbrella at home. Woo, oh my gosh, I forgot my umbrella. Okay, who's this here? There we go, George C. Okay, that's not the Bronson I'm looking for, but very similar. Ah, gotta get back to the car, this isn't it. This isn't it, well maybe this is it. Oh. Okay, that's Davis. Oh, I forgot my umbrella. It was pretty close, even the same inscriptions on the stone there. But it was not the same one. Boy, it is. Well, it's not wanting to focus. There it goes, going into focus. It's not wanting to focus. There it goes. Right over there, so it might be in this general vicinity. I cannot believe I forgot. Lightning. Forgot my umbrella. Oh. All part of the experience. Seems I am in the right area though. There's another Bronson here. I'm seeing a couple Bronsons through this section. Where are you at, Erlo? I'm not quite... Not quite ready to give up yet, but... It's not looking good. Closest one I found was, oh, it is dark. During that storm, part of this branch fell out of the tree here. Even though it is a Sunday and there's probably no one here, I am going to walk up to the office here and see if there's any sort of directory. Oh, wait. There is a legend here. Okay. Is there a search option? A 
very expansive property. Hmm. Does it have names? No names. Oh, here we go. It says print about and help. Oh, here we go. Search. Is that working? Here on the window is a piece of paper taped to the glass. There's a QR code, and I have gone to the the website that has the search, and it says that there is an issue logging into the portal. So no go on the search. It also says you can use the kiosk to the side of the bench. Okay, there's the bench. There's the kiosk. I'll try it again didn't let me search. Oh, what's in here maybe? That's just a, maybe just a mailbox or where you would insert stuff you want to leave for the office. See, this isn't working either. I can't expand this. And when I type that, it doesn't let me type anything in. All right, I found another site, not the one that's recommended here, but did a, did a little searching and found this particular spot. Rose Hill. It was called Rose Hill. Rose Hill. And just look how many Bronsons there are, starting with Charles, Mrs. Charles. Mrs. Charles Bronson. Probably no relation to Chuck Bronson, who that wasn't even Charles Bronson, the actor, that wasn't even his real last name. He changed it. That's a whole other story. He had a different real last name. Nonetheless, we kind of scroll through all the Bronsons. Now, Flora Bell is in the same section. Section 1, Block 103, Lot 1, Flora Bell. So let's go down to Earl o Bronson. Right there, he's listed. Section 1, Block 103, Lot 1, Space G. All right. Glad I did not get distracted by the rain. I am now going to search for that section. We might have some success. It's still sprinkling a little. Now looking at the overview again, there is nothing that says section one on this color code. However, right up here, it looks like section one is close to the roundabout, right there in the middle. So section one in the middle, and then we got section five over to the other side. So I'm gonna kinda go near the roundabout and see if I can see any sections that are posted along the ground, maybe with a some sort of marker. The roundabout is behind me. Having the section number doesn't help much, considerably, considering the fact that there's no markers for the sections or, or anything along the side of the road. Anywhere. The only marker of any sort is where it says Cherry Ave and Daisy Drive. Yeah, not a lot of help. Bronson there. Oh, you know what I could do? I could look at what section this would be. That's what I'll do. I'll look at what section this is in comparison. Okay, John Alec, section one, block 115. I'm looking at the page. So John Alec Bronson, section one, block one, what did I say? 105? 115. And Erlo is in block 103. So this is section one. Okay, that's good to know. Oh my goodness. I have backtracked just a bit. When it was pouring rain a bit ago, I was one headstone off from what I was looking for. Right here. 
Erlo O. Bronson and Flora Bell. September of 71 for her and March 3rd of 1973 for him, as you recall. Spicy Bronson right over here and George C. So I was parked over there. It was storming very badly. It has subsided for a moment, thankfully. I showed this and then I didn't see a name on this side. If I would have just paid more attention, I had to watch the footage back. Maybe I did show it, just didn't notice. Right there, Erlo O. Bronson, 1900 to 1973, the man we have to thank for selling Walt Disney over 8,000 acres. The original, the first person to sell all that acreage, many more after the fact for a much higher price. So in a roundabout way, we have him to thank for what is now Walt Disney World. It was a mission to find this. So if you want to pay your respects to Mr. Bronson, He's located over in this section, underneath this very impressive tree. Looks like there's a structure over there, possibly a, a bank or a business of some sort. You can kind of get the general layout of the land. It's located on the far end over here, next to Davis. And if you look up that way, there is the office. So if you turn into the office, can I kind of use that as a point of reference for Mr. Erlo Bronson, the street named after him, Erlo Bronson Memorial Highway, Senator, House of Representatives, and the founder of the Cattlemen's Association here in Florida, and also a friend of Walt Disney. I never met the man, obviously. I was born in 1974. However, seems like he had a pretty good head on his shoulders. In fact, you can also thank him because he was part of the, the government system here in Florida for setting up the fact that WDW could have their own government system and the way things operate on property. All that was thanks to him. That's gonna do it for today. And also, side note, it wasn't all about money. He was only selling the acreage for $100 a share. After that, some of the other areas were thousands of dollars, not per share, but per acre. So he really was not in it to try to make a, a buck or two. And not to, put, not to put words in his mouth or quote him, to paraphrase some of the interviews that I have seen online written about him. He wanted to do it for the future of the youth and for the area and for the state itself. He knew it was gonna be a good thing. He was right. Walt was right, and he was right. And now we have Walt Disney World to thank for both of them. That's why I was wearing this appropriate t-shirt. I'll see you in the next video. The vlog is over.